Today, I thought I'd inform people, in case you didn't know, that Congress is about to pass legislation, or about to try to pass legislation about obesity and how we as a people are going to address it and pay for it in the upcoming years. This bill, which says that Congress makes the following findings, that according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, about 41% of adults aged 60 and over had obesity in the period of 2015 to 2016, representing more than 27 million people. Now, real quick, whenever anybody talks about that statistic, we're at 42% obesity or whatever, I'm gonna point out that those are at best 2018 statistics and down. Whenever you hear anybody say we're at 70 some percent obesity or 70 some percent overweight or 40 some percent obesity, those are 2018 numbers at the very earliest. If you look at the natural rate of increase of obesity, which is always funny too, because people claim it's their genetics. If it was your genetics, it would just kind of stay consistent. We wouldn't have an increased rate of obesity, but we're getting fatter very clearly. I would argue and postulate that under uh, uh, under the normal rise and then what we saw in 2020, that we're somewhere around 50% obesity in America. I'm just going to, I pre, I feel pretty safe in saying that, seeing as how a huge portion of society gained like 20 or 30 pounds over lockdown. So after 2020, I find it hard to believe we're not at 50% obesity. That, and I've been to Walmart recently. I want to say that the National Institute of Health has reported that obesity and overweight are now the second leading cause of death nationally, with an estimated 300,000 deaths a year attributed to the epidemic. Obesity increases the risk of chronic diseases and conditions, including high blood pressure, heart disease, certain cancers, arthritis, mental illness, lipid disorders, sleep apnea, and type 2 diabetes. There are many more, but we won't get into it. More than half of Medicare beneficiaries are treated for five or more chronic conditions per year. The rate of obesity among the Medicare beneficiaries doubled from 1987 to 2002 and nearly doubled again by 2016, with Medicare spending on individuals with obesity during that time rising proportionally to reach $50 billion in 2014. Men and women with obesity at age 65 have decreased life expectancy of 1.6 years for men and 1.4 years for women. Uh, a lot of people believe that the disparity between the sexes is due to visceral fat and how men have a tendency to gain more visceral fat than women, while women tend to get more uh, less ambulatory as they get obese due to uh, their knees being at more risk than male knees due to hip val or due to knee valgus. It also says the direct and indirect cost of obesity was more than $427.8 billion in 2014 and is growing. And again, I'm going to remind you that we have had a massive explosion in the obesity epidemic since 2014. Number seven, on average, a Medicare beneficiary with obesity cost 2018 in 2019 dollars more than a healthy weighted beneficiary. And we're gonna to get to that in a little bit more later here. We all end up paying that, by the way. Medicare is a, uh, is a funded program through citizens' taxes. So my take on this part of the legislation is that it's factual and all this stuff I've been saying for years. Obesity is a societal problem. It, we all pay for it. We all pay for it. We live in a society. We all pay for each other's illnesses through socialized medicine in some way, whether it be increased uh, costs of care that we all share or group insurance rates or some way. We all share the burden of cost for health care for people that by their own lifestyle choices are affecting the healthcare system at a higher rate. They are using more health care resources from their own decisions. They are choosing this. They are absolutely choosing this. I know it's hard for many of you to get there, but genetics is not a reason. Genetics may account for 10, 20 pounds for some people. Literally, that's it. Maybe a little bit more for very far outliers, but the vast majority of obese people are because you guys are eating yourself that way. And we know this. This is this is just a societal lie that we're telling ourselves. Like, well, some people have conditions. That the vast majority of all of you are just obese because you're eating too much and sitting down too much. You need to accept it. It is, we are legislating it. It is time. Like, if you don't accept this and start doing something about it, they're going to do something about it for you. Like, you should see that. They're going to start passing legislation. It has been open to people that they formed lockdown policy based in part, at least, on the health of the population because population health. And if we're a sickly, obese nation, it is going to affect all of us when it comes to future policies as long as we have people in office that are going to place people's fears over the facts that people have self-accountability and responsibility for their own health. But anyway, I digress. The very troubling thing to me, because besides this, I find this very important legislature. I find this, we need to stop lying to ourselves. We need to get there. We need to accept the fact that obesity is bad for us and for society. It raises costs and it kills 
hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions of people a year, once you add into the factors that 90% of all type 2 diabetes cases is avoidable by lifestyle change, 80% of all coronary artery disease is avoidable by lifestyle change, 50% of all cases of stroke, 50% of all cases of cancer are avoidable by lifestyle changes statistically. That is a massive, that is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of billions more dollars. Now, the biggest troubling thing I find about this legislature is comes in the form of how we're going to pay for all of this. Section four is the Medicare Part D coverage of obesity medications. And it says by striking and other than and inserting other than and by inserting after benzodiazepines, the following and other than subparagraph A of such section if the drug is used for the treatment of obesity as defined in section 1861YY2C or the weight loss management of for an individual who is overweight as defined in section 186YY2FI and has one or more related comorbidities. So my issues with this are it conveniently all of a sudden offers a pathway to payment for a massively expensive drug that was just approved by the FDA that's called Sigmulta. Sigmulta is now being called Wegovy. Wegovy is the, I already did a video about this. Wegovy is the high dosage injection, weekly injection of Sigmulta, which showed about a 10 to 15% weight loss over 68 weeks, where at the end of the 68 week trial, people started to gain weight again. So I really wish we would have continued that trial to see if that actually uh, lost effect if they rebounded weight. However, the problems that I have with Sigmulta and Wegovy is that it has a black box warning on it for thyroid uh, tumors, for a possibility of thyroid tumors, and it's going to cost $1,300 a month. It's like $600 a pound for these people. So if we have 15 million people that have at least one comorbidity, and this is a small number in my estimation, 15 million people have another, they're obese and have another comorbidity, they get their Wegovy paid for by Medicare D, by Social Security. That could be 15 million people times 1,300 a month. That could be trillions of dollars. I mean, if we, there could be a trillion dollars or more if we have more people added onto it. And for the medications to fight off the side effects from Wegovy. So this legislature is setting the American people up to socially, through socialized medical plans that affect everybody, to pay a, possibly another trillion dollars a year to fight obesity. A trillion dollars a year from America to fight obesity. A trillion dollars a year to fight a lifestyle disease. Everybody pays a trillion dollars or more a year, which we probably already pay that in diabetes, type you know type two diabetes, coronary artery disease, all the things, the comorbidities that obesity leads to. We probably spend more than a trillion dollars already, and we're just going to tack another trillion dollars a year onto lifestyle disease instead of having people face their lifestyle choices, get some counseling and reduce their body weight for the good of society, for the good of society when it comes to lockdown policy, for the good of society when it comes to death, for the good of society when it comes to everybody paying trillions of dollars to get people to stop shoving food in their face at a high rate and becoming obese. We need to get there faster, people. God damn.